In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Dr. Helmut Landgraf from the Aero Medical Center here in Berlin. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. Landgraf, what can you do before you start a journey or a long plane trip to prevent jet lag? Before you go on a long-term journey on a plane trip, the best is to prepare your body, just to try to live already in the time of your destination, maybe uh, concrete if you, if you go to, um, uh, to a western direction, you start to live in the time, that means you go to bed late, and if you go to the east, you get up earlier, so you can adjust some part to the time of the new destination. Mm -hmm. So prepare basically, find out what time yes, it is you where you're going. Your body. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, once you're in the air, what can you do to make it easy on yourself? Should you yeah. sleep on the plane, yeah. for example? This also depends on where you're going. If you go to the west, it makes sense to take a nap in the afternoon so you can stay up longer at night. If you go to east, it actually makes sense and is recommended to sleep. Actually sleep and it gets dark to sleep so you can better adjust to the new time. Mm -hmm. So it's all about knowing where you're going to, what time it yes, is of there. Course. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Preparation is important. What about yeah. meals and food intake? Does that yeah. play a role when yeah. you eat, what you eat? Yeah, it makes sense to, to uh, see what you eat. If you want to stay awake, you eat light food, you, you eat proteins. If you want to sleep, you eat more carbohydrates. And there are also studies that show that if you're fasting, maybe you can adapt better to the new time, but these are study, animal studies, so it's not really as far that we can recommend it. Mm. But probably it's not a good idea to eat a heavy meal when you no. should be sleeping Actually really not. on the plane. Yeah, it's not. Mm. So let's say you get there and then you feel, wow, I'm out of my normal mm. rhythm, yeah. I've, I'm jet lagged. Yeah. What can you do to get it over with as quickly as possible? Yeah, you have to be very hard with yourself. You have to live in the new time immediately, you have to get out to have to see the light, to have to be active um, physically and, and mentally and uh, yeah, to go to bed when it's getting dark, mm -hmm. not before. So how about uh, you go to bed and then you yeah. can't sleep? Yeah. Is it okay to take medication or what mm -hmm. sort of medication should you be taking? Yeah. It is only recommendable if you have serious problems starting to sleep and then only just take drugs um, to induce, induce the sleep and not uh, drugs that will make you sleep very long. Mm -hmm. um, there are countries where you can buy uh, substances mm -hmm. yeah. that contain melatonin, the sleeping yeah. hormone. Yeah. Is that a good idea? Do you recommend it? Actually, it cannot be recommended because it's argued on the subject. Some people like it very much. They say it helps. Some people don't. Actually, we don't have no proof that it is really helpful. And anyhow, you may not take it for a longer time, just maybe for some days. If you, if you have relief, it's okay. If not, just leave it. Dr. Landgraf, there are a lot of headlines out there yeah. warning about traveler's thrombosis. How, how likely is it really that you get one? How high is the risk? The risk is not very high, even though it's a little bit elevated when you travel on a long distance travel by plane. But actually, it's not reason, not a real reason to worry about. So you don't have yeah. to be scared when you're on a plane? No, you don't have to be scared, but you should care. Mm -hmm. We've had a viewer writing to us, Mikhail Sukovatic mm -hmm. from Russia, would like to know who is especially at risk yeah. for a traveler's thrombosis yeah. when you fly. Yeah, these are especially persons who already had thrombosis. Um, passengers who have malignant diseases, who had surgery recently, who are prone to have thrombosis, sometimes it's, it's a familiar uh, disposition. So if you have many thrombosis in your family, the family history is important. Uh, and, and if you have special dispositions of your blood, that it's, um, yeah, it, it, it clots very easily. So these are patients or passengers who are at risk. Mm -hmm. You mentioned surgery that increases yeah. your risk of a thrombosis. Yeah. How much time should pass between surgery and yeah. a long flight? Yeah. yeah, of course, this is de depends on, on the kind of surgery that has been done. But you have to ask your doctor before flying. Mm 
Mm. So uh, if I'm on the plane, can I notice myself that I've got a th traveler's thrombosis? What are the symptoms? Yeah, the symptoms are swelling, tenderness of the calf, of the leg, maybe uh, uh, red color, maybe... Um, the yeah, color of the skin uh, on yeah, your... Of the skin, skin. yeah, and, and, and warmth of the leg, of the calf. But you have to, care, to take care that it's one leg. If it's both leg, it may be the heart or it may be just uh, water in the legs because of sitting and your veins are not so very good anymore. But if it's on one leg, you have to be suspicious. Mm -hmm. So if you've got pain yeah. in one leg, maybe go yeah. and see a doctor. Yes. Well, people might think that if you're okay on the plane and mm. you walk off and you've yeah. got no symptoms, then you're mm -hmm. fine. Is that yeah. the case? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not the case because there may be a small clot have formed in your calf and start growing when you have left the plane. So you have, may have a thrombosis one week or two weeks later and it's still some kind of a traveler's thrombosis, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, aspirin is, is said to help prevent yeah. blood clots yeah. from yeah. forming. Yeah. Can that be a precaution? Uh, it's actually not recommended because uh, aspirin has very limited efficacy and the, its side effects have also be, to be taken into account. So uh, it's not recommended actually. Mm. So the only thing you can do is really move your legs, try and get up. Yeah, move your legs and if you're really at risk, which your doctor should be able to tell you, you, make, you can use some drugs. Mm -hmm. What sort of drugs would you be using? Uh, right now it's heparin. These are drugs that prevent blood from clotting. And at the time being it's given by an injection, subcutaneous injection. Mm -hmm. We've been talking a lot about sitting on a plane. Mm -hmm. Is the risk really higher when you sit on a plane than when you're traveling on a bus, for example, and you sit motionless for a long time? If you sit motionless, the risk is always elevated. Um, on the bus you have sometimes uh, the possibility to leave the bus to walk around. That, that makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But uh, the risk is not very different, actually. Mm -hmm. um, when you do suffer a traveler's thrombosis, mm. what, what sort of therapy is there then? Yeah, as, as I mentioned before, what, what you can do for prevention, you do as a therapy too. Because what you want to do is to prevent the clot from growing. and. Uh, to, to prevent that a part of the clot leaves the place where it developed and went, uh, goes to the lung, as we saw in, in the movie before. So what do you do when you travel to get off the plane well-rested and healthy? Yeah, uh, actually, I, I prepare myself. I try to go relaxed on the plane and, and uh, I actually, I also wear graduated compression stockings mm -hmm. because I, I feel they do very, very well for me. And I really enjoy, I never fly without them. So it's all, it's all about preparation then? Yeah. That's Thank it. you very much for being yeah. our guest today. Thank you. You're welcome.